Hey everyone, my name is Olaf, and today I'll teach you how to make this exact animation in Blender 2.8 using Python. And this is actually faster than using modifiers. As always, it's going to be uh, quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. This tutorial was brought to you by Audible. Use the link below to get a free audiobook while at the same time freeing up my time to uh, create longer and more complex tutorials like this one. And before we begin, make sure to download the latest version of Blender 2.8, the link is in the description. Okay, so start off by uh, dragging the top right corner of the viewport to add a new window. And then go to scripting, and then the text editor. And then click new, so that we can write a new script. Then go to view, and let's increase the font size. So uh, let's set it to 16, so that you can see it more easily. And then let's hide the sidebar, so view and then hide the sidebar. And uh, let's start off by writing import BPY, which is the uh, Blender module. And then let's enable line numbers and uh, syntax highlighting for colors. And we can also go to scripting and info. The info window displays Python commands, which will be very useful later in this tutorial. So uh, let's start off with a variable. Let's set the number equals 10. And the number variable is the amount of cubes on each uh, axis. And then we will add a uh, counter variable for the first uh, for loop. And a for loop will execute a block of code several times, which we will use to uh, add cubes on each axis several times. And because we need to uh, generate cubes on uh, three dimensions, we need three for loops. And for each cycle in the first for loop, 2 will be added to the first counter, which uh, measures the location of the cubes generated on the z-axis. And then we'll add a uh, second counter for the y-axis for the second for loop, so let's set it to 0. And then let's create a second for loop for the uh, y-axis. So 4, b, in range so 0 to a number, once again. We can also add or subtract from the number in each for loop so that we can add a custom amount of uh, cubes on each axis, which we'll do later for the set axis. Now let's write uh, counter 2 plus equals 2 so that for each uh, cycle of the second for loop it will add 2 units on the y axis so that it will start generating cubes on the y axis as well. And then let's add the variable counter 3 and set it equals to uh, 0. And then let's uh, create a uh, third for loop for the x-axis. So 4c in range 0 number. And uh, now we're going to add the adding script so that we can add cubes in the script. So click x to delete and then go to mesh and then add a cube. And as you can see, we get the uh, code in the info window, so just click Ctrl C. And then click Ctrl V to uh, paste the uh, code inside the script. And we can also remove parts of the uh, code, so uh, let's remove view align and uh, enter edit mode. Because it's not really useful in this case. And uh, then we need to change the location into uh, the variable we added for the for loop. So uh, let's set the x-axis to counter 3 and then plus 2 and uh, then add counter 2 to the y-axis minus 2 and uh, then add counter 1 which is just counter to the uh, z-axis and minus 2. And the reason why we add and subtract uh, 2 is because we want to avoid overlapping cubes when they are uh, generated. So uh, let's uh, write counter plus equals 2 as well to complete the script and I click X to delete the cube and then let's save before we continue. So go to uh, file and then save as and then give the uh, file a name and I click enter to save. And then let's run the script. And as you can see, we have the uh, cubes. So it's a thousand cubes because it's 10 times 10 times 10. And it works great. So uh, let's delete all of them. So click A. 
and I click X to delete. And uh, now we're going to add the physics. So go to add, mesh, and then add a cube. And then go into the physics, click rigid body, and then uh, set the mass to 20 kilos. Let's set the shape to a box. And the friction is how the uh, cubes interact with the surface. So let's set it to one, and then let's decrease the collision margin. And under dynamics, we can control how much the velocity is lost over time. So let's set the damping translation to 0.35 and then the rotation to 0.6. It's not really important to understand these values, so just uh, copy and paste if you want to. Okay, so now we're going to uh, use this code that was generated in the info window in the script itself. So click A and then A again to deselect everything and then select all of the uh, relevant code for uh, the uh, rigid body. So start from the add rigid body and then click control C and then control V in the script. And make sure each line of code is under the last for loop so that it works properly. Okay, so click X to delete the uh, cube and then go to add and then mesh and plane and click S to scale. And then click G, then set to grab the plane on the set axis. And this is going to be the floor for the simulation. Let's also decrease the amount of cubes on the X and Y axis. And instead increase the amount of cubes on the set axis. So uh, number plus 28. And uh, then let's add uh, rigid body physics to the uh, plane. So uh, click rigid body. And then set the type to passive and the shape to mesh. And then let's set the margin value to zero. Okay, and before we start uh, the calculations, let's uh, save. So file, save as, click on the plus sign, and then save as Blender file. And then let's run the script first. And after a few minutes, we have the uh, cubes with the rigid body physics. To increase the uh, fall height, you can select the floor and I click G, then set to grab the floor on the set axis. And then let's go into the rigid body world. And to increase the quality of the simulation, let's set the steps per second to 500. And then go to cache. And then let's set the end to 500. And then click bake to uh, bake the uh, animation. And after a few minutes, you have the uh, whole animation baked and calculated, which means that when you move on the timeline, everything is already simulated and calculated. And let's set the end frame to 500 because we baked for uh, 500 frames. And as you can see, we have the simulation. The rest of the tutorial is going to be about setting up the lighting and the materials for the render. So let's go to file before we continue. And then click save as, click on the plus sign and then save as blender file. And then let's start off by setting up the light. So I go to add. And then go to light. And then add a sun. And I click G to grab. And then let's set up the render settings, set the render engine to uh, cycles. And if you have a GPU, make sure to use it. If not, just keep using the CPU. And then let's set the amount of samples to 300. And if you have a GPU, make sure to increase the tile size as well to 512. If you only have a CPU, just keep using 64 as the uh, tile size. And then let's go into the sun settings, set the strength to seven, which uh, should be enough. And uh, let's go into render view and then click R to rotate the sun. And then let's change the background color. So uh, go into the world settings. And uh, let's make it completely white. Now the next step is to add uh, materials for the cubes. So uh, let's go to the first frame. And then let's go into uh, wireframe view. And I click A twice to deselect everything. 
and then click B to box select the cubes. And then select one of the cubes by holding in shift, and then let's add a new material. So let's uh, use the diffuse material. And then let's set the uh, color to uh, blue, for example. And then we need to apply that material to the rest of the cubes. So go to Object, and then go to Make Links, and then Materials. And as you can see, when we go into Rendered View, and click A twice to deselect everything, and as you can see, every cube now has the uh, blue material. And you can obviously make changes to the uh, materials and change the colors. So just experiment with the materials and the colors until you have something you like. Okay, and then we need to add the camera and set up the camera. So go to Add, and then uh, Camera. And then click Numpad 0 to look through the camera. And then click N, and the lock camera to view. And then let's go backwards. So something like this, and find the position that you like for the final animation. And try to make sure that everything is within the frame of the uh, camera throughout the whole animation. Okay, so let's uh, disable lock camera to view. So that we can take a closer look, and then we can also hide the overlay and uh, get a better idea of uh, what the final animation looks like. Okay, so let's uh, go into the render settings again. If you have a good graphics card, I recommend setting the uh, amount of samples for the render to 500. If you only have a uh, CPU, I will probably leave it at 300 or even less. Okay, so let's uh, make a test render. So go to render, and let's change the display mode to the image editor and then click Render and Render Image, so that we can render a test image. And if one frame takes too long to render, I would recommend decreasing the uh, amount of samples for the render. So uh, let's go back to the 3D viewport, and everything looks fine, so let's go into the output settings. Because the render time is so long, I'm going to use uh, PNG images for the render. So let's uh, create a folder, so go to Output, and then create a folder wherever you want on the computer. And then uh, select the folder you created. And then give the animation a name. And then click enter. And uh, then let's render the animation. So uh, go up to render. And then click render animation. And after a few hours of rendering, you have this result. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and more simulation and Python tutorials coming soon. Thanks for watching and subscribe.